Hello everybody, Kat here. For the month of September, I thought I would do some um, apple paintings. So today I'm going to be working on a negative painting. Um, it's kind of, well, I think it's pretty simple, but um, let's see, let's see how it goes. Sometimes things <laughs> work out better than others. So I've taped off. Uh, this is a about nine by seven piece of paper and I'm just going to wet the whole thing. And I don't have a drawing. If you have a drawing in mind, you can put put your put your drawing in first. But I kind of like to go do it as I go along because sometimes my colors end up where I don't expect them to. So this is going to be apples and some leaves. So I do want the apples to be mostly red. Some of them can be green. So I'm going to drop in some red blobs of color, just very light. And they don't all have to be the same red. I have a mixture here of scarlet and pyrrole orange. And so it's giving me a bit of a warmer red and I'll add the cooler colors later. I'm just adding some they're a little bit on the big side, I think, because this is not a very large piece of paper, so I could have done it smaller. Okay, so they're just going to be soft, round apples aren't perfect, so it's okay if the if there's if the if the color's leaking, that's okay. Just gonna add a tiny bit more. Kind of giving the impression that they're overlapping each other a little bit. There, I think that will do. So let's get this dried and I'll be right back. Okay, that's all dried. I don't have this taped down to anything. I just taped it because it, I'm working in a pad that I made. And so I don't want the water to spill over because I am working with a fair amount of water sometimes. So um, now my page is a little wonky. So if you're just working on a single page, just tape it down to whatever you usually use. Now I'm going to do a very rudimentary drawing. So I think um, I'm going to have the stem coming out this way and I'm going to have a leaf over here. And don't worry about perfect shapes because they actually look better when they're not perfect. And like that. So there's a leaf coming out of this apple and this one, I'll do them this way, I think. Um, that's going to go off there and this is going to come down here. And that's going to go behind that one. So I've got three drawn and maybe I'll do one more drawn with the stem. And that leaf going up that way. There. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around everything. All the red dots, I'm going to go around it with green. So I'm going to choose a pretty light green. I'm mixing it myself. So I'm mixing cobalt blue hue and some quinacridone gold. And I chose these because they're both um, transparent colors because I'm doing a lot of layering. So I want to make sure that they're transparent. So I'm going to add a little more yellow to this. So if you're doing this and you don't have these colors, just play with your colors, but try to keep them, try to make sure that they're transparent. So they have like a clear on the, on the container, it'll have a, a clear box like that. 
if it has a line like this, it means it's semi-transparent. And if it's like that, it means it's semi-opaque. So definitely stay away from opaque if you're doing layers. Now I can get a, a bit of a smaller brush. I will try my, this is a number six, I believe. I use it so often that the number's not on it anymore. Still a little bit more yellow to go. There we go. Now the reason I'm doing yellow first is because we're going to be doing a lot of layers on the top and I don't want it to, to get too green too fast. So I'm going to go around all the apples, even the ones that are sort of nondescript here in the background. Just make your own circles. Just like that. And if you keep the paint pretty runny, you won't get any streaks. Now often you will see negative painting is done on in one color at a time, but because I wanted the apples, I needed to add the, that red in while on the first layer. See, I got a little bit of a streak there because I let the paper dry. So try and keep your paper wet where you leave off like that. Okay. Nice watery paint. And just shape your apples like that. Add some water. See, I did get a line here. If you get a line, try and go over it a little bit to rub it out. If you can't, don't worry about it. Right now, what I'm using is the wrong side of my paper because I made this, this pad. I made a video of it, but I'm not sure if, if I'll put it up because, you know, it's, I don't know if you're interested, uh, but um, so one side of the paper is the good side and the other side is the so-called wrong side, but I paint on the wrong side often, so I don't really mind that too much. It's just the absorbency is a little bit different it, and it doesn't have the same texture. The paint, the paper is usually smoother on the wrong side. I think that's, that's what got a little bit of a cauliflower going there. Okay. So now we'll come this way. Just a dab more yellow in with this cobalt blue and lots and lots of water. If I fast forward through some, it's because I'm doing the same movement and I, and I'm, I don't have anything to say. Uh, that I think you'd need to hear. So if I do, I'll slow it down. But that way you, if you need, if you need to slow it down, there's a cog button. You hit the cog button on the YouTube window and you will be able to slow it down to the speed that you're, you like, but I won't be talking. Otherwise I'll sound like Minnie Mouse or something. <laughs> If you're a bit slow at this, wet, wet your paper first like that. And then you can add a bit more pigment. So it gives you a little bit more time. I'm just trying to fix that line right there. Try to also to mix up enough color at all at once. So I didn't do that. So you can, you'll see this slight difference in the shades of my green. It's not a huge deal, especially since this is the first layer of green. So when this is all dry, we're going to go in with a bit of a darker green. Okay. Everything's dry. Now this, this is this, now this is my next layer. I'm going to go in with a different shade of green. I'm going to add a bit more of this cobalt. 
It's just to have some variation, right? You don't want all the same, the same greens. Okay, that's going to be a bit dark. So let's get something a bit lighter going. As long as your blue is transparent, you're good. So I'm going to just change the blue. So I'm going to put some phthalo. with the quinacridone gold. Now you see the difference in those two greens. One's warmer, one's, one's cooler. So I think for this layer, ooh, it's gonna mix. Yeah, maybe let's just mix it all up. No big deal. The next one after I dry, I will draw. This one I'm not drawing more leaves. At least, well, okay, maybe I'll draw a couple, but I don't think I really need to too many. And there because I want them on the next layer yeah I think I'll just leave it as is so now I'm going to go around the apples and the leaves that you see so I'm going to try and start up in this corner and keep your paint wet so you don't get any hard lines if you're having trouble you can always switch to a smaller brush and just keep in mind that it holds less water, a small brush. So if you feel that you have to, then just, I'm trying not to make them so even because apples are not that perfectly round. Keep your paper wet. Okay, like this. And then go in with your pigment. I always try to do a negative painting for every season because I just, I really love negative painting and it's good practice for your, your um, brush strokes and your, not so much your coordination, just your fine detail kind of practice because, you know, we all need a little practice with the small spots, especially when your eyesight starts to get to fade on you. Okay, so I'm going to go around this one. Just trying to smooth the transition. And I'm also trying to paint fast for the video. I'm wetting with one brush and painting with the other. I got a hard line there. I don't like that. I'm going to try and scrub it while it's still damp. Thalo blue though is very staining, so I don't have much luck of hoping that comes out. <laughs> oh well, here we go. Okay, let this dry again. We'll be back. Now, if yours looks a little bit like this, like here, I had a bit of uh, back back runs and stuff. Um, if you don't like it, you could always try to take a, a brush and work it out a little bit, like just to soften some of it. But don't worry because this next layer, we're going to be drawing more leaves and so you want the leaves to have this irregular look these first ones are your first layer of paint so they're kind of dull and we'll doctor them up later but now this next layer will be another set of leaves and so you can look around and see where you have some interesting markings and draw some some leaves and you can you can come out from behind other other apples and other leaves. It's just to fill this in so it doesn't look so so plain. So this one I think I'll put a couple of little guys right here. And for this next time, next the next layer that we paint, you're gonna need a smaller brush for sure.
Okay, I think I'll put one up here, coming down from up there. And one coming up from up here. Just make sure your pencil lines are dark enough that you can see them. Now for the color, I want it to be more blue. I'm going to go in with my cobalt. So it's going to be a nice bluey green. And I'll have a little corner of it with more yellow in it, just so I can alternate a little bit. don't want it too too warm because it's supposed to set everything back. I'll use the warmer colors later coming forward. Okay so I'm going to use this smaller brush. I'll see how this goes. I'm going to wet first. I'm going to wet the area. I'm going to go around my my leaf here and I can drop some of that other green in here. Now I'm wetting this area making sure the line that I finished with is still wet so I don't get any hard lines. Going in with a bit warmer one. It's not that warm, but it's a bit, it's a tiny bit more yellowy. Okay, so I'm going to wet. Wet. You can do the fine details on the edges when you get there. Just wet everything. Okay, so now once again, we will let this dry and you can either leave it there or do another layer. I think I'm going to do another layer. Be back in a bit. So for this next layer, not only will I be drawing in some extra leaves, I'm going to add a couple of apples in the back, but because I used staining colors, they're going to be difficult to come off. So I'm going to take a brush that's a little bit stiff. This isn't the best paper. It's cotton paper, but it's it's B paper. So, I'm, you know, I don't want to like over scrub it because I don't want it to pill up on me. So I'll put some water and just scrub a little circle out so it looks like there's an apple or, or two growing in the background. Just to fade that paper a little bit. I think I can get the red to show up a little bit. I just want it in a couple of little places. No, nothing, I'm not going to put any here. And then I'm going to draw a few extra leaves like I did here. They're getting harder and harder to see though. So now definitely this next layer is going to be more blue than green. So the cobalt, oops, and a bit of Quin Gold. And so I'll paint the red well and then I'll speed up and carry on and do the rest. Then I'm going to drop some in here right behind this apple here. Uh, should I put another one somewhere around here? I don't want it symmetrical so maybe I'll put one right around here. I didn't 
whiten the paper there though so it might not work as well. It's just so you get the idea that there's some there in the back. And draw some more leaves. I drew some there. I'm gonna draw one there. Just to fill up the page. And this is an activity that will keep you busy for a long time, depending on how many layers you want to do. And it gets harder and harder to see your pencil marks, so just be aware of that as well. Okay, I think I'm going to start with what I have. Much smaller brush now. I'm going to do this small area. And cool colors send things back, so... That's why I'm using a lot of blue in this green. So it sends that to the background and these leaves here to the front. And then when I embellish these leaves, I'm going to use the warmer greens to do it. All right, now that this step is done, once everything is dry, now mine is not entirely dry, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a go anyway. So I'm going to start embellishing these apples to make them look like apples. So I'm gonna take a bigger brush so I can be generous with the water, uh, with the shapes, and I'm going to mix up some more of my red. And I'm going to also get some brown right here. There, just cuts it a little bit. So I'm just dropping the, that in where I think it would be a bit darker. This is my red and the orange to warm it up. Just because there's not a lot of color here. So we're just going to give it some color. I forgot to wet, wet my apple first. Let's wet this one first. There, just wet it with the brush, with the red. Now this apple is going to overlap this one, so I'm going to put a little bit of dark in there. Let's see if I add, I added a little bit of green to that. So I'm just going to make that look like it's overlapping this apple. Some darks. Gonna wet this one, put some red. And it's okay if there's some white around it. It's not a big deal. This one underneath, I'm going to put concentrated red so that it shows up a bit more. This is the one I painted over the green. This one too. There, and just while they're wet, Adding in a little bit more color. Now most of the lines are soft. But when you want a shadow, you're going to make it a hard line. This sorry guy. I'll have to fix work on this one. 
it a little bit sticky. Cleaning my brush out and dampening it off. Uh, drying it off a little bit so it's damp. Okay. While this is wet, I'm going to go in with a bit of that darker red. The red and the brown. Okay, just down here. It's going to be dark where this is. Some little bit of green on this apple. This one too. Okay. So now I'm dropping in some darks. I'm mixing the red with the, some green to shade, make some shadows, and this one's going to be underneath the apple. That little bottom of an apple. Kind of looks like a tomato if you ask me. <laughs> but hey, that's okay. And just on the ones that are very pale, I'm going to add some, some, um, of these things here. Some veining. No, this is like a half a leaf, so the veins are going to come up like that. Just tickling the page like that. I always have one that I don't like, so I'm going to use some thicker paint on that. Now that stands out like a sore thumb a little bit, but there we go. Looks a little better than that did. This one too, I don't like. Just needs a little bit of something, something. Now it is time to take the tape off. Now this tape, this paper sticks, so go slow with your tape if your paper doesn't behave well. Now what would be super nice is if you, if you, like I left some of the white because I kind of like that. If you don't like that, you just fill it in. But I also, um, you can use some iridescent paints, like you could use some little gold you can fill in some of the leaves with gold or uh, any ir iridescent green if you like. Okay, so I do like how this looks. It's just fine. I, but I did want to show you what it looks like if you put some iridescent paints on. So I have a set here that I got a long time ago at, at uh, <clears throat> Michael's. And I have several greens to try. So I'm going to try this yellowy green and see if I like that. And you're, I use a, 
a synthetic brush to mix this up because you, I kind of scrub it. And Now I'm just going to put it on some of these leaves to see if it brightens up. Now I can't really see much of a difference, so I don't know if it's really worth doing. I put yellow there before, before I turned on the camera. It might just... I don't know, just might give it a little bit of, especially on the the uh, darker ones, you might see it more. But it's not the darker ones that bother me, it's the lighter ones. I find them, they always look a little bit left out when you do a negative painting. However, it that's that doesn't have to stay, stay that way. I just wanted to show you what it would look like if you did put some iridescent paint on the leaves. So I'll do a couple more and then we will call it a day. Put some there. Yeah, this you really can't see the difference. You can see the nice shimmer, but you can't. It doesn't really make much of a difference. What it does do is cover up some of the veins if you don't like them. I like some of them without the veining actually, so. There we go. Just a nice little touch here and there. Now it is watercolor. These are watercolor shimmery paints, so you can always wet it and sop it back up and most of it will come off. Just have to make sure that your water is very clean. And there you go, it, it comes off. Whoops. You can also, if you have a big enough set, like this set, I have a nice red here. So you can also add a little bit of shimmer to your apples. And on the whiter parts, you can use, I have a very pale, it's like a pearl color, I believe. So I can always put that where the lights are on the apple. And that would help to for them to stand out. So it's kind of loosening up a, a painting that can be pretty um, heavy. Because it's a negative painting, it can be full of hard lines. So this is a great way of loosening it up a little bit. Okay, so that's it. And as I said, I may uh, continue working on this. <laughs> and if I do, I will post the picture. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you give this a try. Uh, if you did like this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And don't be shy to leave me a comment. I would just love to hear from you. Happy watercoloring. Bye bye.